It's Owen and Julian Blanc sitting here on Hollywood Boulevard. And what we're gonna be talking about today is the importance of what we call meta-level awareness. And what that means is that for most of your life, you're sitting there in your head trying to think about your problems, your life, your bullshit, and not putting enough emphasis on thinking what other people are experiencing. Now, even when I say that, just in even saying that, like 90% of the people just clicked off this video. They're like, oh shit, I, I, thinking about other people? Oh, that, yeah. bleh, right? But what you're not realizing is that the number one sign of a fucking loser, of a low status individual, is their inability to consider what others are experiencing and to kind of deal with that. So what this video is gonna show you is actually how to increase your social status huge amounts, huge, believe me. And the way that we're gonna do it is by showing you that getting out of your own shit for all of two seconds a day, all of a sudden, your actual perceived status is going to shoot up. Here in Hollywood, recording with this little, with Peter. Peter from Family Guy, with the little bird. You want to sit up? No, I haven't. Peter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it as a big compliment, bro. It is. What are we talking about in the video? We're talking about social calibration and getting out of your own bullshit and considering other people in such a way that will help your social status in a tremendous fashion. Boom. So we got an intro shot, but we now lost the light, so brainstorming for a good place to film. So I want to ask you a question right now. Would you like to become one of those people who, whenever you walk in the room, everybody's like, it's Julian Blanc, oh my god, oh, it's Ju oh. Or would you like to be one of those people who's more like, yeah, Julian's coming, I know, sorry, right? And which one do you wanna be? Now, the reason that I'm asking you this is because you may not be aware that this is really something that you can influence so, so, so easily when you just understand a couple simple things. And the reason that both Julia and I are very passionate about this is that the way that we built the company, a lot of times it's through having great connections and insight from high-level people and being able to get into venues that we like to go to, and they could be hard to get into, and learning how to talk our way in. And from having different associates and different influences where really we're not rich at the time when we're coming up, we don't have a lot of social proof at the time when we're coming up, but the one thing that we do have is raw social skill. Okay, just raw social skills. So no, I don't care how broke you are, if you're not good looking, whatever it is, you have this one thing that you can choose to get down. So we're gonna be looking at it today from a standpoint among many that we could be looking at, but the standpoint that we're gonna be looking at is are you in a coping state of mind where you're just sitting there like, it's all about me, it's all about me, and people feel kind of a suck coming off of you? Or are you in a thriving mindset where energy is just like, Ah, it's coming out. Nice to meet you, man. Zane, Good to meet you, man. I, uh, I started a company like a year and a half. And now we play you guys at our sales meetings like every week. We're over, we're over 100 people. Like, we're crushing it. It's been really awesome. Yeah, man. And uh, I really do appreciate everything you guys do. I was having trouble with girls, but one of my biggest things was just being present in the moment, just being really... Uh, I, I've always been like a fast thinker and a fast talker, and I've never been present in the moment. And watching you has like changed my life. Thanks, man. So I started a solar company about a year and a half ago mm. and now we're a little over 100 employees we're at 24 million in revenue that's how i met with ty mm -hmm. um and uh honestly it's been the biggest game changer for me so the average person whenever they're interacting with someone they're typically thinking four things the first is you know say we're talking how does this relate to me mm. if you say something that just doesn't relate to me and i'm your average joe i'm just gonna block it off it's just like oh you know these these chips here in this little vegan restaurant if i'm not here and you're calling me i'm just like when is he gonna switch to something else that refers to me? When do we talk about me? My favorite topic. Okay, so how does this relate to me? Number two, they're thinking, do I get it? So if you're explaining something, as soon as it clicks, oh, I got it, I'll just cut off the rest. You just don't listen to the rest. Number three, when is it my turn to speak? And this one's huge, and I've seen it, I mean, you've seen it too for years, uh, teaching guys how to interact with women. They're just waiting for their turn to talk. What about me? What about me? When do I talk? Okay, is she done? Is he done? Done. Okay. And number four, am I being tested? Did I pass the test? These are the four things that your average Joe is thinking about whenever interacting with someone, thinking that it'll help that person, you know, maybe be higher value or pass the test, when in reality it just lowers your value. 
and people sense it immediately if you're actually there present. Like if we're talking, you'll sense immediately if I'm like listening to you or if I'm drifting off like, oh, I got it. Oh, is he talking about, oh, me? You're just not there. You're just interacting with someone through these filters and it just kills your value. It turns you into this very unlikable person. Uh, yeah, just this little pest. What you want to try is an experiment for, for one week. And this, this experiment is going to make you want to like blow your brains out when you see it. Where watch different conversations that people are having. And what you're going to see is that whenever, whenever you watch two people talking, You'd think that the two people are interacting, kind of having fun, and sometimes they are for sure. It definitely happens. Sometimes alcohol is involved, it helps them to do that. But one person's talking to the other person, and you can see that little hamster in the person's brain, and they're continually going, what does this have to do with me? So, you know, if you're talking about some kind of like, like we're in LA right now, and you know, there's some kind of issue going on in LA, the person, rather than just talking about the issue itself that's happening in LA, they're gonna keep bringing it back to themselves. You know, so we had like, you know, a big rainfall a few months ago. So say you're like, yo, the rain's getting crazy. I'm like, well, up in my place doesn't matter rather than just talking about the topic itself. Or say you're saying, oh, the rainfall thing, I'm just waiting for you to finish talking so I can give my opinion on yeah. the rainfall. Like, well, you know what? Here's my opinion because I don't actually want to listen or let the other person talk. Or maybe I feel like I'm being, like, like it's some kind of test, like a self-qualifying thing. Like, I've got yeah. that under control. Or, or you try to top it with a story. Like, you hear a story like, hey, I bought this new thing. And I'm like, how do I pass the test? You know what I bought? Or, oh, I get that you experienced LA, the rainfall. But, you know, up in Seattle or in Switzerland, you wouldn't imagine the rain. Mm -hmm. My rain beats your rain. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the funny thing with that one is like, so say, you're say two people are talking, right? The general purpose of conversation socially is to elevate mood. So people who are not cool, they think the purpose of conversation is as a test or a self-qualification. To win. Yeah. To win. So people that are cool, they view it like it's to increase the emotion. So if you're like, yo, the rain here is crazy. And then I said, dude, you haven't even seen rain, man. Okay? Like, it's in Switzerland. It's super crazy. This is nothing. And then you're like... And it sucks the energy out of the conversation because you're like, wah, wah, wah. Like, okay, well then, good for you. You saw more rain than me. Great. Um, and then the vibe's not going up. So what you have to understand is that this comes back to coping versus thriving. And so somebody who's in a coping mode, they tend to feel more like, what does this have to do with me? What's the test here? What can I talk? It's very defensive, yeah. Mm -hmm. Versus when you have somebody in thriving, they, the underlying, here's the key, the underlying assumption is I'm fine either way. I don't even need to have this conversation because I, I have what I need in life. So I'm having this conversation to amuse myself. There's nothing I need to get out of this or to pull out of it. Everything's chill. I'm good. But rather, how could I increase the vibe? And so the example that I've, I've taught it before, you'll hear me say this in you know, videos probably till the day I'm dead, is with coping versus thriving, Whenever I say I'm rushing to the airport and I get into an Uber or a taxi, the, you know, the Uber might say, how are you doing? And I'm always like, good, right? Like, it's about me. It's just like, good. Like, I'm too fucked up over it. Say you just had a breakup or something really messed up just happened. And they're, they're like, how are you doing? You're kind of like, like, good. Because there's too, <laughs> there's too much, there's too many different mental faculties being absorbed to be yeah. able to, to absorb it. Like, if you take that guy who just... Um, you know, put the plate down right in front of the camera there. This guy's running around here frantically. He's in coping right now. He's like, I got to get the, the Brussels sprouts here. I got to get to this. He's probably not too thrilled to be doing this kind of work. Maybe, maybe not. But in addition to that, the last thing he's thinking of is like, am I disrupting anything when I slam down the yeah. Brussels sprouts even when we're, we're recording? You're not, not, it's not even like dissing the, the dude. It's just like, you know, he's fucking, he's busy. And so that's a great example just to happen right then and there, right? Whereas, you know, if everything in your life's going awesome, you're not in some major rush. Maybe you actually are like, well, this thing that they're staring at right now, maybe I should just slam a, yeah. a Brussels sprout in front of it. So, or people who cut in front of the shots. Like if you shoot in a busy street, like say New York, and you see people rushing to work, shoot right in front of the camera, shameless. You know, and then you'll see someone like maybe on their vacation, touristy, just taking their time and they'll see the shot and be like, oh, let me, let me walk around, you know, versus, eh, fuck this. Usually I'd walk around, I'm rushing, eh. Yeah, something we see all the time. Yeah. So that being the case, when you're in thriving, you don't say that I'm in a good mood and the Uber says, how are you doing? I say, oh, no, great, man. How are you doing? Because I'm good, so now I'm going to be more focused on him. If you're watching this in a mode right now where you're not feeling super great, the last thing that you want to hear is me or Julian be like, yeah, care more about other people. You're like, dude, I'm in fucking coping. Like, last thing the waiter wants to hear is like, you know, every time you put a, a plate down, look at where you're putting. He doesn't give a fuck. He just wants to finish his job. 
But what I'd say to you to kind of to bait you in a little bit is that if you get this down, your social status will actually increase and you won't have to worry about when's my turn to talk or is this a test or um, how does this affect me or those things because you'll just be so good in life that you it won't, none of this stuff will even matter to you anymore. But weirdly, by having it matter, you're kind of like in this weird spiral. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, like this weird loop that's self-reinforcing where your social status is lower versus when you can break out of this, your social status will actually go up. And you'll feel more energized. Like you think, like if you're in that Uber situation, because I've had it too, where I'm just like really tired. I'm like, ugh, I don't, do I want to spend the energy talking back and not just talking back, asking like, how are you doing? What if he talks more? What if he asks me more questions? It's draining, but in reality, it's like that concern, like, oh, how does this relate to me? Oh, will I have to talk more? Is even more exhausting than just letting it come out and actually asking the person, how are you doing as well? So we just came up to our new friend's house who we just met on the street. You guys cool with us putting you in the video and you yeah. came up? Yeah. Okay, so, all right, so we tried to be spontaneous. So we just, he posted on Instagram stories and then they came up to say hi and then they were like, yo, we got a cool place up in the crib. So we just came up and we thought we'd finish out the video up here and be spontaneous. The basic thing that I've learned, and this goes for social skills, but it also goes in marketing. I mean, this goes everywhere, is that you've got, you've got to stop having a continual focus on your shit. And you've gotta get out of that, okay? So one of my great marketing mentors, it was John Carlton. He had a book called Kick-Ass Copywriting Secrets of a Marketing Rebel. And the big lesson that, that he'll give in that is that the average person is so caught up in their shit and what's going on with them that they can't market effectively. So Evan Pegan even talks about this too in his marketing stuff where somebody will have a flower shop and they'll wanna name it Jane's Flowers. And then you say, well, what is the feature or benefit that the client would get out of that from Jane's Flowers. And they're like, they're like, my name is Jane, and this is my flower shop, and this, this shop is about me, and my life, and, and my journey to create the flowers, right? And so Evan Pagan, he used to run a program called Double Your Dating under the pseudonym David D'Angelo. And so he made his title, Double Your Dating. And so it had a, it had a value proposition based in it. So, Sometimes Eben, his, his real name is Eben Pagan, he's married now, and sometimes Eben will be trying to help somebody in their marketing, and it's like, you know, like say for example that, uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, your program, right? Instead of calling your, your latest program Transformation Mastery, we would call it like Julian's Journey, right? So we're gonna ask yeah. you to pay hundreds of dollars. For the so story of me, mm -hmm. watch me transform. Julian's mm -hmm. personal transformation in so every detail about me. So you can express yourself, right? So it's not, it's not like, yo, we're gonna show you how even though right now you're stifled and fucked up, your life could look like this and this and this and you could feel like this and this and this. No, 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 no. It's not, forget all that. This is about Julian and his journey, right? Now, Julian's journey is good within the context that you can see parallels to your life. And if you're seeing parallels to your life, you're like, damn, it's, it's fucking wow. This is amazing. Hearing about your journey was so inspiring, Julian. If you can correlate that back to your journey and, and your life. So even like, I'll have videos where I'll do like a two hour story about my life, but I'll keep bringing it back yeah. to the principles that I learned, which are transferable to you. Now, John Carlton also teaches this. He says, what is everybody's favorite word? You. So anytime, for example, that we're, um, that we're speaking, like some people in YouTube videos, for example, a lot of people start their YouTube videos, and they, go, they go, hey guys, mm. or like, hey everyone. No, 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 no. This is not fucking hey everyone. I, and I realize a lot of major YouTubers do it, um, you know, like probably Jenna Marbles or whoever does that. But like, if you gotta get gangster here, you wanna be straight up, it's like, what's up? It's Owen, and what we're gonna teach you today is this. We're not, we're not coming at you like, okay guys, Okay, guys, oh, it's fucking, no, you, it's you, okay? And we're gonna smash that in there. And the reason why is because everybody's favorite word is you or their own name. They even teach us some marketing where they'll actually have little algorithms where in an email, they, they, it'll have this little algorithm where if you put your first name in, say, you're, say it's Julian Blanc, <laughs> then what you have is, is it'll say, Julian Blanc, ooh, ooh, ooh. would you like to learn the secret of yada, yada, yada? Now, when we make these videos for you, great, because we are gonna make the video for you. So from that context, you could just soak it up. Mm, this video is all about me, that's great. Awesome, right? But for your own social skills, 
You've got to let, you've got to learn how to get out of your own shit and actually be aware of what the other person's experiencing. And many people simply have not taken the time to really, 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 really consider what is this other person experiencing. Now, you gotta be careful with this because some people are so caught up in getting approval that they're like, all they think about is what the other person is experiencing. But it's like kind of this weird way where they're kind of tiptoeing around them and they're afraid of them and they're, they're chasing their approval. And that's not really good either because now the other person just weirded out, but we're speaking yeah. about it from a context of studying what that other person's subjective experience of life is and how you can bring value to that. Hmm. Well, even in that context there, where it's like they're aware, but like to get approval, it's still about them. Mm -hmm. It's I'm aware of the other person so they can approve of me. So it reinforces, I feel good about me, me, me. So it's still like okay. sucking, trying to get for them versus mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, get a feel for the other person so I can give. It's mm -hmm. still like that taking vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, this is super key. So like shifting your focus outside of your head, cause that's really like the four concerns. Like when is it my turn to talk? Is it a test? When are they going to talk about me? It's you, you, you to what's the context, whether it's a person, whether it's a group, whether, and this is super common, for example, during a seminar, uh, when someone asks a question, you mm -hmm. see it immediately. It's like, what's the context? You're here in a big crowd, someone's speaking and you're asking a question. And, uh, I see it more and more throughout the years. People just don't get the context that it is a seminar. They raise their hand and it's either a question that's unique to them and no one else can relate or they talk way too long. And at first everyone's like, oh, so what's your question? It's like, hey, so, you know, when you talk about this and then they go into their life story, you know, when I was like five and I could really relate and everyone's like, and they just don't sense, for example, you know, the vibe just getting sucked out of the room. It's like, okay, this person's going on a little too long because they're in their little head, their little story. Um, I see it too when I give an answer. If it doesn't really hit on, you know, there's what you want, there's what you need. If it doesn't hit on what they want and I'm giving them what they need, they just block it off, waiting to ask the next question. Um, yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So shift your focus and always ask yourself, what is the context? What is the context and what is appropriate to the context? And uh, every time you do something that's not appropriate to context, you're gonna suck the air out of the room. And I mean, some examples, whether it's like a question in an audience, another one is uh, if you make a joke, it's say I make a joke right now and you laugh, you know, on the other side of your screen, on your cell phone, you laugh. And then I just stop the video. I'm like, by the way, um, you do get why this is funny, right? It's because this equals this. Just adding that at the end, you're like, um, okay, you just killed it here. You know, like that's, uh, when you're not aware of a certain context. So shift focuses and then it's pattern recognition. That's really, it's trial and error, put yourself out there and instead of just blindly just going through the motions, only focusing on you, do something, say something and then look at what happens and then get a feel. Oh, when I say this, the person reacts this way. When I say this, that person reacts this way. In this context, the person reacts this way. In this context, the person reacts this way. When I feel this, the person reacts this way and like really make everything conscious, get a feel for it. And then once you get a feel and you make the appropriate tweaks, you can make it unconscious again. Um, but this is something you have to do. And uh, one point that I do want to add here is when you hear this, and uh, this is a question I get a lot too. Um, you hear us talk a lot about breaking out of social conditioning. You know, it's like, stop giving a fuck. And then you hear advice like this, where it's like, do give, give a, fuck. a fuck. Care so much that you study their every thought and learn how to connect to where they're at every fucking but detail. But don't give a fuck. And the subtlety lies in, are you letting this basically confine you? Like, are you letting it affect your self-worth and you're completely stifled? For example, um, if you go out in a restaurant, um, a lot of people are like very scared of like even speaking up or even to the waiter. The waiter comes like, um, can I have some water, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you're being quiet there because you don't have a choice. You're affected by the environment. You're affected by whatever conditioning is there. Here, what we're talking about is don't be attached to that. So your self-worth is not attached to whatever the context is. So if you want to speak loud, you can. And then it's coming from a place of choice. You're aware of the context. You're not imprisoned by it. And then you choose to act in a way that's appropriate so people can relate, so people can get you. And you don't come off as someone who's, again, sucking the air out with, because you're too, say, quiet or too loud. Because that'll happen too. And less and less people have this. You know, mm -hmm. especially with the internet where you spend most of your time now 
behind a computer screen, on your cell phone. Um, I mean, yeah, even linking it to seminars. If you watch a webinar or a video like this, there's the comment box here below. So it's like whatever comes to mind, you're like, at two minutes and 30 seconds, look at what happened, oh, like that. Or just like <laughs> some, some like random, like webinars, uh -huh. the same thing. It's like UFOs, dick pics, like all this random shit. And then you attend a seminar and instead of like quietly sitting there, like here's the context, I'm here with a bunch of people, I'm not alone. You just raise your hand and blurt out shit. Cause you're uh, like, where's the chat box? Uh, where's the real no, life chat box? I was actually at the Tupac Shakur yeah. movie yesterday. And there was this dude that just, it was so crazy, man. Like he would, he just couldn't help but just being like, yo, tell him Pac. And it was like, it was like constants. I mean, it made the movie more entertaining to be honest, but it was like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you, know. you don't see like, oh, there's a bunch of other people here, what's appropriate, mm. you know? Um, yeah, less and less people have it. You don't learn it, you don't socialize. And you act basically in the real world with like, you act in the real world thinking you're in the internet world. It's mm -hmm. like the rules that are online in the real world and it just doesn't compute. What I want you to do is I want you to watch in yourself when you're able to do this and when you're not, and then you'll be able to detect it in other people. So the example that I, that I love giving is I wake up, and I've got to catch a flight, right? So, you know, idiot that I am, I've been like packing till too late, packing my supplements and like packing my clothes and all this and like getting ready to go. And so I get to bed at like five in the morning if I'm lucky, maybe like eight in the morning and the flight, you know, I got to leave for the flight at 11. So I wake up on about three hours sleep and I feel like I'm, my face is being kicked in. Mm. Like, you know, some person on the street is beating me in the face and I'm just like, get up. I'll go out to the Uber, you know, and the Uber, of course, you know, thank God, you know, since taxi cabs, there's no accountability because there's no five star thing, right? With Ubers, usually they're, they're like, how are you doing, sir? Good morning. And if I'm that tired immediately, I'm, I'm just like, like, I actually feel like, like I, I'm almost mad at them for mm. even asking, right? Like, like, how are you doing, right? In my mind, I'm like, why are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah, just like, leave me alone. I'm like, and so I'm just like, fine. Like, it's because because my whole thought process is, is like in poor me. And so it's, I'm, I'm like, good, good. And where's the request silence button? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Right? <laughs> the request. Dane yeah, Cook joked about it. it. It's true. It's oh, like okay. in the app, you're like, request silence. Oh, really? It's like, don't talk to me. Actually, be a okay. great update. You're tired, just like, yeah, you just say fuck off. It's about to say fuck off. <laughs> so, okay, okay. The fuck so, off feature. Fuck off. So, basically, what you have is I wake up, if I'm exhausted, how are you doing, sir? Fine. Or like, good. Or like, not, or like, or like, not even like say good. Like, just okay. And like, like, first of all, dude, when that person said, how are you, he doesn't need to hear you say shitty. Like, basically, like, you, at that point, you couldn't even contain your own shit not to be shitty right now some people funny enough they'd say you know well if you're being real and authentic then you should just say you feel shitty like if you want to say shitty but then you put a positive spin on it maybe or something like that it's interesting but you got to remember who's it about it's like when that uber driver says how are you he's just trying to increase the vibe from there what you have is when i wake up alert and so the guy's like how are you doing and then i find that i'm filled with so much energy i'm thriving so much that i mean when i'm really thriving i'll start cracking up the driver I'll start making jokes to the driver, cracking him or her up, joking around, having fun, sharing, right? Like if we're sitting here right now and we're having a fun time, you know, it's a nice evening, it's good to meet you guys, I got my team here, everybody's having fun, we wanna share. And then you're watching this at home and then you're, you get to soak that up, you know, or you're watching on your phone, whatever, you get to soak that up and so it's like a good feeling, right? As opposed to like if we just turn on the fucking thing like today's shitty, which you might like sometimes, maybe it switches it up a little bit of an unexpected video, but you don't want that as the norm all the time. So coping versus thriving. When you're in coping, you don't have the mental bandwidth to think about the other person's experience. So when the other person's talking, either A, you're just waiting for your turn to talk, B, you're waiting just like, like, just like how does this affect me? Like, like, what is this, what's my outcome on this? Or you feel like they're testing you or whatever it is, right? So the one that, this is the first one my mother ever taught me. Um, my, my mom didn't teach me a lot of heavy duty social skills, but she taught me this and, I, and it was actually like something I never forgot as a kid. So my mom came to me one day and she's like, look Owen, I got this shirt on sale. What do you think I paid? And in that moment, I'm thinking I'm being tested. I'm like, well, she said, uh, it's, she said it's a sale. So that means it's cheap. So I should just say really low so I don't look dumb. So I'm like three bucks. And she says, Owen, when people say it was on sale, what I pay? Just guess a little bit high. And then when I tell you it's lower, then the emotions go up. So she, she knew that, I guess. So 
the idea of it being, look at the two different examples here. Julian, I just got my new old man rainbow shirt on sale. What do you think I paid? What do you, what do you guys think I paid on sale? So pick really low. Two bucks. Wow, no, still 120 bucks. Well, well. And then what would you say? And then what would you say? Oh, still looks wow. Dumb. Still cool. That's really expensive for what it is. Yeah, that's expensive, right? <laughs> that I just killed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can feel that now. Then you double down. That'd yeah. be like, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that. Well, that's what people would say. It was still a yeah. good deal. They would just shut you down. Like, no, that's really expensive. Like, oh my God, you should have gotten that for cheaper. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Look at this website. You could get it here yeah. for cheaper. <laughs> just shove it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or I remember one time I got a new apartment. It wasn't even like super expensive, but I guess it was more expensive than my buddy had. And so he's like, he's like, what do you pay for this? And I said, uh, twenty nine hundred a month. And he's like, dude, I would never pay twenty nine hundred a month for this. Well, why does he say that? He's more in coping. Yeah. So he's making it about him. Like it's now because what's happening is he's looking at it, and then he's saying. I'm, I'm feeling shitty that I can't afford $2,900 a month. And then I'm questioning myself, would I even need a place like this? And then what's happening is, um, is his emotions are going down and then he's dragging me down into his world. Like at best, at best at that point, what's, what's the best outcome? Like the optimal outcome at that point is I'm like, oh, well in 11 months, um, I'll secure a better rent payment. And yeah, you're right. I, ne I, never, sh I never should have got this place. <laughs> So it's the difference, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, cause just to sort of heavy handedly berate this example, if I say, I got this on sale, what do you think I paid? And then you're like 250? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I go, no, 120. And so emotions go, it's on sale, guess what I paid? 250, no 150, wow, great deal. So emotions going up and up and up. So in thriving, the meta frame, okay, the, the word meta frame, I think that's, do you guys know if that's NLP? Maybe you guys know. I don't know. That's what they call that neuro-linguistic programming. So I think, that, I think the word meta frame is from NLP, I'm not sure, but the idea of the meta frame is that there's an underlying meaning to it, okay? There's an unconscious subcommunication. So typically the underlying communication when you're in, when you're in um, you know, when you're viewing it as a test or waiting for your turn to talk or making it about you is you're in coping. So you're a low status person. You're not, and, and therefore people get negative emotions from you on two levels. One is that you're saying all this shit, making it about you, which, you know, like dissing their price of their rent or whatever. So they're not liking what you're saying, but it's also hitting them on another level, which is that people want to be around other high status people. When you have high status, you walk down the street and people say, not to like be weird, come to my house and shoot in it. And when people have low status, people say, here's a quarter, go away. Or not even here's a quarter, just, go away. It's like they say uh, that, you know, the hungry don't get fed. Meanwhile, if some, you know, if, if uh, Leo DiCaprio walked into the restaurant that we were in today, he'd probably get a free meal for eating there when ironically he doesn't need it. He'd have girls trying to fuck him when he has already has too many girls trying to fuck him. Meanwhile, a guy who's broke either isn't let in the restaurant and no girls want to fuck him, even though he needs sex and he needs uh, food very badly, right? So you wanna be in that upward spiral where even things that you don't need people are offering to you. So if there's an underlying meta frame of coping that's there, not only are you saying things that would be perceived to the other person as potentially negative or at least not very uplifting, but also they don't feel like they're around somebody of status, which then it kind of takes away that halo effect that somebody of status has and so you're getting hit on multiple levels. And so, I, I mean, fundamentally, you've got to make a decision that you've got to work on yourself to where you're okay, both in terms of actually making your life okay on the outside, but also shifting your inner perspective to feel good on the inside, starting right now. It's also valuing feeling good and just talking or say interaction with someone with the purpose of just feeling even better. You know, because we come at it very logically. It's like, well, what do I get out of it? What's the point? Just feeling good, that's it. Like, one, you know, mission I used to, um, you know, give guys all the time when it comes to, say, going out and interacting with girls is go out one night and uh, go out with your friends. Usually, like, you go out with your wingman, you know, your buddy you're going to go talk to girls with. Go out with that friend, sit at a table in a bar, and uh, for the whole night, so you go out at 10, 10 to 2, that's four hours, don't get a single drink and don't talk to a single girl. Just sit there with your buddy and see if you can just chat and shoot the shit. And uh, most guys just wouldn't be able to. Well, you had, you had a thing you, you know? used to do when you would teach live events for successful women where 
sometimes you'd see guys that only would want to talk to women that they're really attracted oh, to. Oh, well, that's and it, you yeah. And you spend two of the three days making them talk to women who they weren't into. Could you explain the rationale beyond that? Because I thought, I mean, probably yeah. no one will ever want to attend your, your program ever again now, but there <laughs> was like, a what? point. No, well, well, just to, they, they go hand in hand. It's like just vibing, like shooting the shit, getting out of this logical, what can I get? It's like you're there with your buddy. There's nothing you can get. You're just stuck there, and most guys would not be able to shoot the shit. They'd be like, so, there's, you know, I can't fuck you. Uh, how's it going, I guess? And they just can't generate that. And it's the same with... Um, so they're not getting something out of it. Exactly. They can't even muster the will yeah. to, it's to like thrive, right? not getting right? anything, you're like, if you got a dick, why am I even talking mm. to you? Type of like the Uber thing, thing right? right? I'm tired. Yeah. He says, how are you? Why should I say, how are you, back? Yeah, it's I'm like, tired. what are you going to get out of an Uber driver? And that's why I even say, like, you just stay at the table not talking to girls. Because if there's, say, some goal, then you two can, like, shoot the shit talking about a goal because you know you're getting something out of that goal. Mm -hmm. But when there's no goal and you're just stuck there, can you vibe? And it's the same reason I would tell guys who only wanted to interact with girls, you know, they found attractive. I'm like, hey, talk to the girls you're not attracted to as well. Learn to see the value in that. Even though, yeah, you might not be attracted sexually, you can still shoot the shit and build positive emotions yeah and, and what you're trying to do there is get you're just taking like yes gonna, yeah. well, you're, well you're trying to get them from coping to thriving because ironically if for the first two days they're talking to girls they're not attracted to what happens what, essentially they're forced to start just having fun with people and then what happens on the third day when you let them talk to the girls they're into kill it immediately you know it's like that's usually you know when you go from like an intermediate to an advanced mm. um you go through that phase where you have to learn how to have genuine fun talking to everyone and stop judging them and thinking about the outcome all the time mm. you know and it links to what you were saying before it's like if you are thriving you don't need anything you have your shit fucking handled it's like you have your shit so handled that you can afford to let that pour over onto the other person mm. and that's what you do it's like you talk to everyone you feel amazing and then you go to that girl say you're attracted to you like how's it going Boom, she gets the good vibes, good emotions, you just hit it off versus scanning, closed off, defensive, like, why would I talk to her? What do I get out of that? Uh, would I get something out of that? Why would I talk to this person? You know, and you're just judging and it's just, again, in this coping, just, yeah, kind of sad reality, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also understanding that the more you give, even in terms of, say, selfish needs here, the more you give, the more you get. And it's not like must conserve resources. Because the hungry get don't get fed. More. Versus Leo DiCaprio. Yeah. Will, do you guys say he's your neighbor? You go to the next cool. The next okay, so, okay, so basically, so Leo DiCaprio, it's like, Leo, come in, get the, here, take the food, Leo. Versus, uh, yeah. you know, the guy who just can't get a freaking dime to save his life. If you're in a mode where, where you wake up in the morning and like, try this as an experiment, okay? Like you just look at like, Look at your hands for a second. You guys could even try this back there if you want to, okay? Look at your hands. Look at all the little, like, we'll even get you to do this too. Why not, right? So look, like, put in the light. Like, look at, like, the, the weird fucking lines in your hand there, right? Like, look at, like, the little micro hairs that you never notice or, like, little lines in your skin here. For me, freckles that you never notice. And even just try, like, touching your hand, like, so in some masturbatory way. Yes, yes. <laughs> young skin, young flesh. Mm. This is how I get... Aaron to do this with me in the morning without looking just, just do this with us yeah. okay do it with just, us just pet your okay. hand touch it touch your hand it's not gay it's just to learn about self-help just touch it now and so <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, this guy okay? and then just take like look look at the fire here for a minute and observe the fire and kind of let that in and just like enjoy the fire for a minute maybe Aaron if you want you could just pop the camera just pop the camera over here for a second and you know look outside at the beautiful view. So now you're seeing you're, you're seeing downtown Los Angeles. It's it's kind of like the most beautiful. You can even pop outside for a second if you want to. In some ways the most beautiful city in the world. I love it. In some ways like a third world country. It's a mix. Let's not focus on that. I'm sure you guys have that's occurred to you before. So then basically <laughs> you know, so so just look at the beauty of that. Take a deep breath right now. Take a deep breath with me. Ah, just take a nice, a nice deep breath. Just look deep in my pupils right now. Okay, it's not gay if it's for self-help. So just keep looking deep in my pupils right now. If you're a girl, just hit me up on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. And it's not like, it's, it's not sex of the weird guru if it's for self-help. So just talk, okay, as you can see. And that is how you get gratitude, essentially, 
your mind has to shift into being grateful for what you have going for you right now, okay? So, you know, because you could think, I don't have this, and I don't have that, I, I need better food, and I, I need to have a better life, I need a Lamborghini and knowledge right now. You could make a choice to focus on what you don't have, or you can focus on what you do have. Now, as you're focusing on what you do have, you're feeling really, really good. And now, you don't need to get something out of somebody. Now, as you don't feel like you need to get something out of somebody, the meta frame shifts to where you're the cool person, and then they begin to seek your approval. So you go from being like a black hole to the sun emanating out. And that doesn't mean that you need to go start pandering to them and over complimenting because really that's about taking. But so when people say be yourself, the translation that means to me is like, enjoy your fucking life and feel good and enjoy the fucking cool shit that is your short fucking life and then share that with others as you, as yourself. That's what it means to me. It doesn't mean, um, you know, be yourself, like be all fucking negative and fucked up and then talk about your toxic shit. With this state of gratitude too, by the way, and this is huge, um, be aware of how you're conditioned just with mainstream media and social media. Mm. You know, it's like we buy into, for example, like Instagram, you'll go on Instagram and you're like, how can I be grateful when this person's doing this and this and this and their life is so amazing and look at how they look. Although they have a filter and it's been photoshopped, look at how they look versus me. Uh, and you just focus on everything you don't have. You turn on the news. You look at everyone just getting fucked over, all the horrible things happening. How this person's being oppressed and that person's being oppressed. And you're like, oh my God. And it just conditions you to not be grateful, to complain. To the point where you could be linked to success with women out in an amazing club. Let's just say in Los Angeles, like one of the top clubs with cool people surrounded by cool people there's music there's lights like everything there is designed for you to have a great time and you're just sitting there just feeling horrible just trying to take to feel better just ah fuck this i need this i'm missing this versus whoa take a second and actually take it in here i am in fucking los angeles oh my god you know and this is something yeah like even like instagram will take that away from you if you buy into that like focus on complaining focus on what you don't have how about Focus on what you do have. Or looking at Instagram and thinking of it in terms of lack rather than possibility. Yes. Like that's why I like say, say Todd stuff because mm -hmm. some people look at it in terms of lack. Like I don't have that Lamborghini. Yeah. When I see it, I'm thinking in terms of possibility. I'm like, dude, that's so dude. sick that you yeah. did that. Yeah. yeah, lack versus possibility. And uh, I mean, this is something I do every single day. It's like, just reflect back on your life. Like where you are now here today versus say yesterday, the day before and uh, shift your perspective too just say reading books like even reading like really dark and horrible books and this sounds kind of fucked and morbid but like say you read man's search for meeting by victor franco like the most horrible things ever but it really puts you in your place with the shit you're complaining about mm. you know it's like we have such first world problems um i saw it today just at the the grocery store some lady was like yelling at the person who was like bagging her groceries because she didn't bag it correctly and she was being charged like, what is it, five, 10 cents for an extra bag. And she's like, why is this like flipping out? I'm like, God, you know, it's like just, I mean, yeah, to be in that state where you can just bitch and complain about just that. Well, it truly you know. is the ultimate coping. Yeah. And, and you see that a lot at the airport um, oh, when people yeah, miss yeah. their flight, they need to get it rebooked. And it's like, yo, dude, uh, that this airport worker is not like United yeah. corporate. This is not Continental Airlines corporate. You know, and this person's like, it's like mm -hmm. a, like almost like in Star Wars, you have the stormtroopers and like it's okay to kill all the stormtroopers because they kind of look like a robot. So people start to think that an employee of a corporation mm -hmm. is like a robot or like when these terrorists like go, you know, blow up a Boston Marathon or something. Like it's like the Americans. And it's like there's so much in coping that they just view that as like not even a person. Yeah. And so it takes a minute, like, what? Actually, even with the Uber driver, it's like if you're in coping, you're in the Uber driver, you don't even view that person as a person. Yeah, it's, just, it's Uber. Yeah, if you actually thought, wait a minute, that's another human being, what might that person be thinking or feeling right now? Suddenly there's a lot more connection. There's like that human to human connection. You'll be more inspired to just, hey, doing good. What about you? Versus, fuck this person. You mm -hmm. know, it's all just, it's just you alone. It's like, there's another person. What if you were that person? So on the practical side, from now on, what you're gonna do 
is go out, and this challenge sounds so simple, but it'll change your fucking life. Every single day, start interacting with, say, three people you don't know. Just three people you don't know, chat with them. You know, you're at the grocery store, instead of, say, yelling at the person bagging your groceries, ask them, hey, how's your day going? Just talk to three people in a way where you're just sharing some good fucking emotions. And when you do, look at their reactions. Put yourself in their shoes and look at their reactions and ask yourself, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? And uh, what, one thing that helps massively is just look for tenseness and look in their eyes. If they're kind of tensing or maybe looking to the side, like, eh, okay, maybe you should change something. Or if they're too bored, like looseness, maybe you should change something. Okay, for example, if you start asking a question at the seminar, and I use this example because I see it every weekend, and someone goes a little too long into their backstory, at first the crowd's like, okay, we're listening, and then after a while they'll either cringe, like, okay, okay, shut up now, or just tune out. That's when you gotta shift things and let go of being attached to finish whatever the fuck you're saying. Shift things and realize, whoa, I just made it about me, okay? Also, bring some awareness to what you're saying and why you're saying it. What's your intention behind what you're saying? Is it about you or is it to give? Okay, is it, wait, I'm saying this to impress. Oh, I'm saying this to reinforce the story of me. I'm saying this because I just want to hear myself talk. Okay, um, be aware. Even when someone shares good news, if you ask yourself, hmm, how can I relate this to me? Okay, that's great news, but you know how this applies to me versus can you just let it be? And, and notice the difference is one is a dopamine spike energy mm -hmm. where you're in a low vibration state and you're trying to spike your dopamine by putting it on you. Whereas if you're already in like a peaceful present state, you're not relying on those dopamine spikes, so you're less likely to, to do that. that. That's a very, very, very subtle point because we're describing the subjective experience of making this shift. One is yeah. low vibration state and then like make it about you to get a dopamine spike. It's kind of like this little mini dirty high. Don't shame yourself for it, but just understand it versus being in a present state and seeing what emerges from you in a natural way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's learning how to meet your own needs and make yourself feel good on your own. You know, I used to call this, uh, here's a great one, uh, emotional masturbation. Where literally, best example, uh, everyone who's in coping, it's like they wanna come and they can't masturbate. So they're literally walking around like, can you jack me off right now? I really need to come. <laughs> Like, I really, really, can you, can you do it? Like, uh, anyone? Like, please, I really need to come. Please, please, please. Like, trying to do anything to just come. You know, and they're walking around, you just feel it. Like, the neediness, like, ugh, no, no, go. Once. So it's, so it's hand job solicitation. Literally. Right? Emotional hand job yeah, solicitation. You're, and then you're trying to figure out ways, like, well, what if I say this? Would they jack me off if I say that? What if I pretend to smile? Would they jack me off? You're just looking for someone to jack you off without realizing that, hey, you can jack yourself <laughs> off. That was beautiful, man. For real. It's like, you gotta realize, you can jack yourself off. And, and by the way, it's not gay if it's for self-help. And then, <laughs> so keep going. Well, no, then instead of like going up to someone like, will you jack me off? You're already jacking off. You're like, hey, join in yeah. on the fun. <laughs> and then you just like jack each other off. And I, know, I know that like, I would do almost anything to make a video shocking. I'm tempted if we did now, but just, we're not gonna do it. Okay. No, but it's true, it's like, that's the difference in the vibe. You know, is someone coming up to you and you feel the need that they want, like they need to be jacked off, or are they being jacked off? <laughs> so do you wanna look like the guy that needs to jack off? Or are you gonna be the guy that can jack himself off? And you've gotta choose, and you've gotta draw that line and know who you are. Okay, and <laughs> oh, and by the way, no, link into this too. Another one is not taking things too fucking seriously. Taking things way too seriously. Mm -hmm. Like someone here is like, well, wait a minute. I don't know about this joke. It's not very appropriate. Or, well, get back to talking seriously. What's this laughing? Why are you wasting my time, me watching you laugh in this Ultimate video? Ultimate sign of coping. They don't like jokes in the video. Because it's like, where's this fucking jack off thing, man? I'm mm. struggling. It's almost like you went up to a homeless person and you're about to give him a dollar. And then you're like, do you want to hear about my little joke first? You before you get the buck? And they're like, give me the fucking buck. Yeah. And you're like, come on, let's do it, guys. Let's look at the fire and look at downtown before you get the buck. 
And he's like, just give me a fucking, I need a drink. You know, and you're like, yeah, downtown, come on, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and it's just like, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? So that's why we do a lot of jokes and videos is we're actually trying to give you a bit of a shift in perspective. We're actually trying to demonstrate, just clown around like that, like our humor is our fucking fucked up like West Coast Hollywood humor. You always want to ask yourself, am I offering value, good emotions, or am I being responsive to the situation? So like the example that you gave there with the grocery clerk, in coping, you're probably staring at your fucking phone. Huge sign of coping, just staring at your phone. I do it too, man. Okay, I wish, you know, everybody in like the whole room's gonna go quiet right now. Like, <laughs> the room's like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like, you know, if I'm being real, yeah, you know, like when I'm like, if I'm fucking hungry as shit waiting at the restaurant, I'm kind of like, and just like kind of waiting for the minutes to go by. And I'm having a great time, I'm less likely to be inclined to do that. So if you're staring, you know, st you know, staring at your phone, being in this kind of like suppressed state, you're not thinking what does the situation need, right? So when the waiter comes, when you're in a coping state, you're gonna stare at your phone, you're gonna mumble your order and not make them laugh and not make them have fun. In a thriving state, you're gonna probably be coming from a frame of like, the waiter's here. This is a difficult job as that Brussels sprouts guy earlier showed us, right? He's scrambling all over. And how, how can I share and shed some good energy into the situation? Now, whenever I'm in the situation where, you know, say I'm at valet parking and, you know, say I'm gonna give a guy a tip or something like that, the way that I tend to be is I wanna feel that that guy, even in, in valet parking, is feeling really, really good. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make him laugh a little bit. I'm gonna make the clerk laugh. I'm gonna, like, sometimes, like, one of the kind of funny things I love to do is with an old lady, like if she's, if she's enjoying it and like consenting and happy about the whole thing, is I'll start like flirting with her, like really nasty and stuff like that. And a lot of time they're like, oh, thank, like, like I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah. You know, like, like just like, like, mm, like this, like, like an 80 year old woman, right? And at the end they're just like, thank you, thank you. Oh, that was amazing. You know, like just anything you can do to lighten people's day. But what's funny is as the energy is always moving, you're drawing up more energy and you're sharing more energy. So the, the basic frame is how to offer value, good emotions, or be responsive to situations. Let's bring it back to your um, uh, seminar example, right? Mm -hmm. One guy puts his hand up, you're in New York City in Manhattan, and he says, I came here from Iowa, and I live on a farm, and there's a, the neighbor 10 miles down, I want to fuck her behind the haystack. So I thought I would ask, you know, I thought the, the 600 people here could benefit from you talking for half an hour about sex and dating with a, a cow and a haystack, a female cow. And, and you could give the half hour answer, but the, there's two problems. First, like the room's energy, it's gonna suck the energy out of the room, but I mean, unless it was hella funny, which could be good. But then in addition to that, he's now being trained that when you don't ignore the vibe of the, when you don't take mind of the energy of the room, and then you make it about you, you're gonna be rewarded. And so there's an instinct as a teacher where you're like, you know, I will, I will sit here for hours with you answering whatever you want. I will do anything to help you. But if I do this, it's like a kid acting up and then you give them a bunch of cookies for acting up. You're not helping them. So you're almost always gonna go back to that same challenge of explaining to them this basic thing of you gotta offer value, good emotions, or what the situation is. So what would be, you know, a great example is a question. If you got 500 people there, a question that everybody, like, like like, let's take a pause, okay? So let's do some, some genius shit here. Let's take a pause. A, does the question benefit the whole group? B, can the whole group hear me? Am I smiling? Or is it, so my question is this, you know. Yeah, like freaking out the room essentially, right? Yeah, it's like loud enough so they all hear you, smiling, like adding the good emotions versus taking those emotions away. If that guy has a question that made the room laugh, awesome. If the guy has a question that the room could all benefit from, Awesome, study what other people want to experience. Study it, study other people. What emotional state is that person addicted to? What is that person's ego and self image like? What are they trying to get out of this situation? Where are they going? What are their priorities? What, are their ex what is their existing world view? How can what, you know, what emotions do they want to experience? What do they want to experience from a person? And how can I be myself and maintain my own personal boundaries and authenticity, but find a win-win to where I could share that with them and we experience it together and, and really just coming from a basic frame that I got what I need. Cause you know, like when I see celebrities out, I remember I saw Vince Vaughn out. He just walks up, like everybody in the room loves me. Just like, 
Good to meet you, friend. Like, he, he walks up to me. Good to meet you, friend. Not an ounce of neediness coming from the guy because he has what he needs, but in doing so, he just further solidifies his own godlike status. And that's really what we're trying to show you here is how to solidify that fucking godlike status where you're just the fucking shit. You're the, you're the shit. Because you got what you need and everybody wants to be friends with you because you always bring that great energy. So start now. Are you laughing or are you in your head? Are you still wondering how does this all relate to me? Or can you perhaps smile? Perhaps enjoy the fun that was shared. The message underneath the words. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest happiness I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. We got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. He's made me realize some of the things that I had been suppressing for almost my entire life. This year, like if you remember this and you take it with you, like that's what you need. You can't bullshit your subconscious until you fully accept and release and go through and experience all the stuff you suppress, you're always going to be escaping. When the fuck do we actually sit down, really get in touch with what's going on, and like experience it? Where else are you gonna let loose like this? Where else? And where else are there gonna be other people who push you to let loose even more? Nowhere. Everything outside this room is telling you to do the opposite. So as soon as you leave this room, you're back in society, back in a place where people tell you to shut the fuck up, they tell you everything that's wrong about you. They tell you to fit in. I don't care what is authentic to you. Just keep it to yourself. You don't deserve it. Don't be happier than everyone else. Fit in. Ah! Ah! Now talk. Bring it. Ah! Ah! This is the type of place that shows you what's possible.